All right, I'm trying this one more time. Bill of Rights. So I actually have to read, I don't have it memorized. Congress of the United States begun and held at the city of New York on Wednesday, the 4th of March, 1789. Way over 200 years ago. The conventions, a number of the states having at the time of their adopting the Constitution expressed a desire in order to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers and expressed desire in order to prevent the abuse of its powers that further declaratory and restrictive clauses should be added and is extending the ground of public confidence in the government will best ensure the benefit ends of its institution. So we had a document. We kind of wanted to clarify what it was saying. So this is our attempt to clarify and give, uh, give us a little more focus on what we're saying. So let's include all of the people and not trample down on the individual states. One man's interpretation, not a constitutional lawyer, just a dude in his backyard reading to a little machine. <sighs> Resolved by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, two-thirds of both houses concurring that the following articles be proposed to the legislatures of the several states as amendments to the Constitution of the United States, all or any of which articles, when ratified by three-fourths of the said legislators, be valid to all intents and purposes as to part of the said Constitution visa. Articles in addition to an amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America proposed by Congress and ratified by the legislators of several states pursuant to the fifth article of the original Constitution. We call that old school legal ease. So we're going to say this. If you agree, we're going to put it in. It's going to be law. <clears throat> article the first. After the first enumeration, enumeration required by the first article of the Constitution, there shall be one representative for every 30,000 until the number shall amount to 100, after which the proportion shall be so regulated by Congress that there shall not be less than 100 representatives nor less than one representative for every 40,000 persons until the number of representatives shall amount to 200 after which the proportion shall be so regulated by the Congress that there shall not be less than 200 representatives nor more than one representative for every 50,000 persons. We're going to try and represent equally. What we don't know is this population is going to explode over the next 200 plus years, but we're going to keep it, you know, we're going to try and represent the people. We're not going to have more than one per 50,000, or we don't want it to be just that. Article the second, no law varying the compensation for the services of the senators and representatives shall take effect until an election of the representatives shall have intervened. All right, so get to read it and see. Article the third, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or pro prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a regress of their grievances. So we're allowed to gather, peacefully protest, can't stomp that down. Uh, it, it basically clearly says freedom of religion. So Christian, Muslim, atheist, we can practice. <laughs> Um, and we're allowed to speak. You're allowed to speak. Everybody's allowed to speak. Um, and then of the press. So the press gets to talk. It's not fake news. Um, now it does say Congress, so I guess we can write a, um, an executive order that s stamps out freedom of the press, but that you know, it just doesn't seem to be abiding by what this country's all about, but that's just one man's public opinion. <sighs> Article the fourth, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Stop talking about gun legislation. 
Constitution says we can have guns. Just, it, that's not what we need to focus on. We are allowed to have guns in this country. End of story. <clears throat> Article, no so soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. All right, so the guy down from Fort Gillum can't come over and just shack up in this house. But you're welcome. I support our troops, and I am happy to, you know, feed you dinner and uh, have you stay the night. So you're welcome here, but I've invited you. Article the sixth. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. And no warrant shall issue be but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and persons or things to be seized. We gotta have a reason to come search your stuff. And it's gonna have to be a lawful warrant. Article the seventh, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a, I can't even spell it, pronounce that word. Yeah, I have, let me have a little more coffee. Or indictment of a grand jury except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or in the militia when in actual service, time of war, or public danger, nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be completed, compelled in any criminal case to be witness against himself, nor deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. I've had some easement issues at my lake house, but that's a whole nother story. So, um, There's no double jeopardy. If you've been tried, you've been tried. And we have to have a reason to try you. There's a lot in that short little paragraph that I actually would hire a lawyer for in case you're facing any of those things. Don't listen to some dumbass on his back porch as the sun's rising. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial. We saw that last night by an impartial jury of the United States, an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and to the, be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witness against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witness in his favor and, ha and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Speedy trial right to a lawyer, let's go, be ready to defend yourself. In suits at common law where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of common law. Yeah, this is why we have a lot of people suing each other all the time for no reason, but, uh, you know, that's all. Y'all, just, let's be logical, y'all. Let's not get a little crazy. Just start suing over 20 bucks. It's not worth it. Um, let's not impede upon the rights of free people across this globe. You know, let's let them into this country and show them what it's about. Come, come on to, you know, sorry. Back to the document. Article the 10th. Our founding fathers were really, really, really worried about going to jail. That's what the half of this is about. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. Depends on what the definition of is is. What is the definition of excessive? Um, so, that, that's kind of convoluted. The, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed or deny, to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Yep, I need a lawyer. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights, certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. 
So, if it's in the Constitution, we're not going to change it. Article D12, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution or prohibited by, by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. So if it doesn't say it in this piece of paper and we don't add it later on, it's a state issue. So the individual states get to make that call. Um, that's a big part of what's going on. You know, people want states' rights. Let the states decide, but at a federal level, let's go by, these are pretty good. Let's go by this. Let's, you know, let, let, you know, free, free speech, freedom of the press. I can own a gun if I want. It's right there. I encourage you to read this for yourself, not let me transcribe it. I started to read the Constitution itself, but that's a hundred people, you know, that's thousands and thousands of words that are basically Congress, House of Representatives, legislative, and judicial branch. Uh, so you go read that yourself. And honestly, the Declaration of Independence needs to be read because it's talking about a tyrant from England. And I think a lot of those words apply to the U.S. today. So I don't have the energy yet. I don't have enough coffee in me yet to read the Declaration of Independence. Please do. Please understand what we're fighting for and what we're standing up against and what we're all about. Let's let's have some equality. Let's let people into this country that are trying to I don't that have the legal right to be here, much less trying to help people that have been hurt. Um, you know, Clarkston is just up the street and it's got the largest refugee population in the United States. And it's a great town. But we need more areas like that, not less. Let's think about being inclusive, y'all. All right, I'm going to stop. I got back on the Facebook just for this. Aren't you happy? Much love, y'all.